Now, before we get started, there's a few things I'm going to show you that are only included in the newest version of Reaper, Reaper 7.37 or newer. So if you're using an older version, make sure you update to get all the features in this video. Now, you're probably thinking that creating new tracks is way too simple to make a video about. But I promise you, if you go through this whole video, there'll definitely be a few things you could use and you may not have known. So let's take a look. At its most basic to create a new track, we can go over here to the track control panel and double click, and that creates a new track. We can create more by double clicking, blow it, and keep going. And if we run out of room, we could scroll down, or we could select the track and right click and choose insert new track to add another track right here. Or we could use the keyboard shortcut right here, Control T on the PC or Command T on the Mac. Hit that keyboard shortcut and it creates a new track below this one. But let's delete all these and let's create a few. Let's do three and number them. Let's give them a color just so we could see the difference as we add a new track. Like I said before, if we hit the keyboard shortcut, it creates a new track below this one, the selected one which you could bring to the top, but we could also choose some other options. We could right click and instead of choosing insert new track, we could choose insert new track at end of track list. If we choose this, it puts a new track at the bottom instead. Or in the newer version of Reaper, we could also choose insert new track as first track. And that puts the newest track at the top of a list, which could be more convenient. In fact, we could change the default keyboard shortcut to do that instead. Let's go to our action list by typing the question mark, type into the filter, insert track, and right over here is the default set up for that keyboard shortcut. But we could change it to this one instead by adding that same keyboard shortcut. It replaces it. And now we could hit that keyboard shortcut and it creates a new track, but puts it at the top. Or we could choose to put it at the bottom if you prefer. But I prefer to put it at the top like that. Let's delete these tracks. Now we could also right click over here and choose to insert multiple tracks at once. That opens up this dialog. We could choose multiple tracks. Let's choose four, and we could also give them a name. So if I type in vocal and hit OK, it creates four tracks, but it automatically names them based on the name we chose and also numbers each one, vocal one through four. Pretty convenient. But let's say we want to create a MIDI track with a virtual instrument plugin on it. Normally, we double click over here, go to record, change the input of the track to be MIDI, then go to our effects, go to our instruments, and choose an instrument we want to use. Let's choose Satala, double click it, and it adds it right here, and we're ready to play this track through MIDI. But to save time, we could do this a quicker way. We could right click and just choose Insert Virtual Instrument, on new track. And that opens up our effects with our instruments already selected, ready to choose it over here. Again, we'll choose Satala, double click it, and that creates a new track, puts it in record, sets it up to MIDI, and puts that plugin on the track automatically. So that saves us a bunch of time. But to save even more time, we could save this as a track template. We could right click, Go to Save Tracks as Track Template. That opens up our hard drive where our track templates go. We can give it a name and save it. And now, if you want this set up next time, let's delete this. We can just right click, go to Insert Track from Template, and choose Satala. And that brings it right up exactly where we left off, ready to record creating a track with it named Satala with a MIDI setup and the plugin ready to go.
exactly as we saved it. Now we double click or use the keyboard shortcut to create a track. That track has its defaults, which we could set up in the preferences. Control P on the PC, Command comma on the Mac, opens up our preferences, and we can go into project to track send defaults, and all the defaults for our new tracks are set up in here. We can adjust the volume, envelopes, automation mode, set up the inputs for monitoring, the inputs for mono, stereo, and so on. So each track will be set up exactly like this. Like instead of setting the volume to zero, we can set it to minus six. And now if I create a new track, the volume defaults to minus six. Now we could also create tracks by dragging in media, whether it be audio, MIDI, or video. Let's go to my hard drive. I have a folder here with some loops. I could drag in this drum loop right here and drop it. It creates a track with that drum loop's name and the file right in the timeline, ready to be played. So that also creates a track. But we could also do it from the Media Explorer. Go up here to the View menu, go down to the Media Explorer. That opens this window. And right over here, I have some loops on my hard drive. The drum loop from before. Again, we could drag it and drop it over here and let go. And that also creates a track with the name of the audio file as the track name and the audio file on the timeline, ready to be played. But we could also just double click a file. Double click this one and it adds it the same way with the track name with the file on the timeline ready to be played. But we could also put files in a sampler. Also from the Media Explorer. We could right click this loop, go to Insert into Sample Player, and insert Sample Player on New Track. And that also creates a new track based on the file we chose, but it creates a sample effect that we could trigger from MIDI. The input is set up to be MIDI, it's in record. So if I play my USB MIDI keyboard, it plays that loop. So again, it also created a new track. Now we could also create new tracks starting with an effect. If we use the keyboard shortcut Shift F, that opens up the effects browser. So let's say I wanted to add a reverb to a track, type in verb, let's use reverberate. We could drag this to a track control panel like this and drop it. And that also creates a new track with the effect plugin we chose already on that track. So if you wanted to create an effects return, this is a great way to do that. If you wanted to do it with delay, type delay in the filter. Let's use read delay. Again, drag and drop it over here. And it creates a new track already named Read Delay with that delay effects on the track, ready to go. Another time saver if you want to create an effects return based on an effect you choose. And speaking of sends and returns, let's create a new track. Let's say I wanted to send this track to another track. Instead of creating one first and dragging and dropping from this one to this one, or going to the routing and sending it. To track two right here, we can create a track in the process. We can go to the routing on this track, go to add new send, and add new send to a new track. And that creates a new track with this track sending to it. Or we can go the other way. Go to the routing on this track, go to our receives, and add a receive from a new track. And that also creates a new track where this track is now sending to this track. So you can create new tracks through sends or receives. And finally, this is one of my favorite tricks, but it does require that you install the SWS extensions right over here. But once they're installed and you reopen Reaper, you should get an extensions menu. 
And when that shows up, we can go to Auto Color, which opens up this dialog, which I have set up with different filters with rules. Basically, it's going to auto color on new tracks. The rules are up here, but with every track or any track I set up over here, is going to be this color. So now, if I create a new track by double clicking over here or using the keyboard shortcut, it defaults to this color. Create another one or another one, and they all start off with this color. Unless I use the rules up here to name them for different colors. Like for bass, I would get this one. So if I name this track bass, the track changes to that color. Or for vocal, we'll get this color. Name this track vocal, and it changes to the color we choose over here. And again, I have different rules based on names, and the names don't have to be exact. So I can name this lead vocal, and I still get that color. But by default, because I set up any color to be this, each new track is going to be colored like this. So it's kind of nice to start off with a color and then just change it based on the names of our tracks. Again, you have to set this up yourself, but if you take the time, it's worth it. So that's pretty much it. That's creating new tracks in Reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you can use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bingo, boys, let's go.